Thank you. Good, good, good noon to everybody. I'm with your happy to uh, I think, yes, that's my presentation. Um, from the National Lottery Commission, it's no longer called the National Lottery Sports. We are the provincial of the Northwest, and uh, speaking on the National Lottery and how we can we can improve our funding structures. We can accept applications to fund various IKS projects. Uh, we can go to the 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 National Lottery Commission established in terms of an act parliament. We we were primarily the press, I think that the, the person who's controlling the slide. Just press press it, the slide will just fall into place. All of it. We yes, just keep on pressing to fall into place. Yes. We report to the minister of the GPI now as we were to GPI. Uh, we, uh, we sorry, the test of Elang. Uh, Can you please uh, speak a bit, uh, increase your volume? Uh, the, you yeah, increase not... my volume. Yes, please. Okay, let me do that. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Maybe if you can... Uh, Put your camera in such a way that we see your face. Oh, yes. Uh, not properly. I'm using two screens because my laptop has a problem. Can you see me now? Um, can you see me? Can, can, can you bring a bit? Uh, can you yes, see yeah. me now? There you, are, okay. there you are. There you are. That's there great. You. I hope you can see the presentation also on the screen. Yes, we can, sir. We can see it. Oh, that's beautiful. Basically, we established in terms of an act of parliament, which is called the National Lotteries Act, and it gives us two main responsibilities. Mainly, we are the regulator of the lottery license. I think, uh, as you know, it, um, we, the lottery license now, it was Gidari, now it's run by Tuba. And we give this license once in seven years. You know, they, we, there's a bid going out, a call for people, to come, companies to come and compete for the bid. For the, for the license. And once the company is approved to take on the license, what happens is that within that, uh, we've got the regulation that says that we get 77, 27% from their proceeds, from their, what we call the, 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 the money that they make after paying off the, the winners. And that 27% comes into what we call the National Lottery Distribution Trust Fund. This is where now we start funding uh, good courses or worthy courses and and as we find worthy courses in different uh, sectors we've got the the charity sector which where you find civil society organizations which work with social development that's where you get your home-based cares old age homes that's where you get your different uh, groups fighting for, for for vulnerable groups starting from orphans uh, people with disability children with disability the agent and, and, uh, and various organizations that we come across. Then we've got another sector, which is called sports. We fund all different sporting codes. That's where many teams from the community and sporting federations come to us for funding in South Africa. And we've got what we call arts, culture, and heritage. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that later. This is where we IKS would fall in. And we've got what is called miscellaneous. The miscellaneous sector is just a sector where we'll find something that doesn't fall within the three sectors. And usually, yes, keep on doing that. Usually we've got, in that sector, we've got, it's only 2% of the 27% that goes into that. So we, we, are a pub, we are a public entity, a government entity. We are ruled by the Public Finance Management Act. And that's where we, we, we have, and we've got adjudicators, which we call distributing agencies that we receive applications and they adjudicate. And who, how, and what is funded in the IK space? What we fund is nonprofit companies or nonprofit organizations. What we want from the organization is the nonprofit certificate, the founding documents, bank statements, or financial statements. You know, the organizations that are still small, which are still growing up, if you are founded in 2020 or 2021, you just come with your founding documents or registration document 
and bank statements. They can be for one month. We don't want to see a lot of money. Those, for, those are for small grants, which are up to 500,000. And from the NLC, I know I'm talking to IKS practitioners and other researchers, they'll come with a 10 page a business plan proposal or proposal. So from the NLC, what you will get from us is an application form, a business plan and a budget format. We have made our own business plan. So you'll have to streamline your project into that. And what we fund from the NLC, basically we have not taken it down. We do projects. Within projects, we will cover OPEX and capital costs. OPEX meaning operational costs. That's yours, your stipends, your salaries, your running of organ, everyday running of the organization, audit fees, bank charges uh, come from. So that's the OPEX. Capital costs, sometimes you need a computer, you need a table, you need to set up an office, basically. Sometimes some people come and say, we need a car to do research. Others will say, we need a building and things like that. So that's what we do. This is the, this is the, 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 the way we call the operational space where we, we, we look at uh, uh, compliance. Uh, I would like to go to the next slide. This is where we, we have categories of funding. You've got small grants. If you just like today, you've got your certificate, you got your, 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 your constitution or founding document and you've got your bank statement. You don't have audited finance. You are just starting. Maybe you are a graduate. You don't have a job or you are still at school or you anywhere in the space of IKS. Small grants are there. You can get up to 500,000. This is meant to develop uh, small organizations. Then we've got medium grants. It's from 500,000 to 5 million. Large grants are 5 million to 10 million. So we get towards uh, uh, developing small organizations and this one space, this is a, a system that we pick up small organizations with. Then once you're within the system, you can start auditing, we can give you audit fees and you can start growing as, as an institution. And I think I'll go to the to the to the last slide. No, a second presentation. It's not long. It's just only three pages. This is our contact details. Uh, the one of the advert. What we usually do once a year, we put up a a call for application. That call for applications uh, happens once a year, and this year we have not opened. Within the IKS uh, field, we do accept IKS projects. We have not streamlined them to say we do a particular sector or a subsector of IKS. What happens that we've opened it up? This is the this is the advert. This is how it looks like. This is from last year. Uh, we do arts development. Most of the artists, for example, would, would draw, if they do drama or they do documentaries, somebody went around to do documenting uh, indigenous heritage sites in Mahiking making a little drama or a, a performance drama for, for, for school kids. And it was touring uh, primary schools around Mafeke. And that's just an example. The, can you go to the second page? There's one thing I want to show you. Where we would, can you go to the second page of the presentation? Uh, go down. Uh, the third one, I think that's where we'll get, uh, if you take it down. Uh, no, 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 go up again to number three. This is for environment. This, this heritage. Uh, number three talks about heritage. I think it's on the, the second, yes, this one. We've got what we call national heritage. That's where we look around. We look at tangible and intangible heritage. Basically, it includes IKS, where we talk about oral histories, commemoration, conservation, indigenous knowledge system. This is very broad. Indigenous knowledge system is quite like this to be able to accommodate different kinds of projects within the IKS space. So, and we, we just let those organizations to come through. You can apply from any province where you are in South Africa. We just want you to be a non-profit company. The easiest way is to open a non-profit company, which requires three directors. Then we have a bank statement. Then you come to us, then we'll be able to fund you for any project within the IKS space that you would like to go to. To, to do, I've, I've, I've learned to read about the Patenting Act in, within the IK space and many other projects that we'd like to do. So in short, this is the National Lotteries Commission. We're gonna be advertising in the next two weeks. So it will be on different uh, platforms of the media. You can come visit our offices. We have what we call customizing officials. They will sit with you to guide you through the compliance, which whichever part of the country, we've got nine provincial offices in the country, 
whichever compliance issues that are needed, they'll take you through the forms, the business plan, the budget, and the application form for you to, before we take the application, we make sure that you, 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 you comply. Then the distributing agency is the one which is going to deal with the, with the project itself, the project details to say, how, how are they going to fund you? So we have a website, there it is. We, we will be opened, I think, in the next two weeks for applications. In short, that's, 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 that's who I am and this is where I'm coming from. We are urging the IKS community to come forward. This is one big opportunity where the lottery that we play every day, some of the money comes to support our, 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 our community projects and IKS is one such thing. Thank you very much, Kialeboa. And thank you, Rapids. Um, I don't think I'm going to say anything further. Can I just uh, hand through back to the program director? Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mama, for your uh, precious uh, uh, session. It was, it was informative. And um, as far as I know, especially the last one, that, that, that's where we are interested, you know, where can we get money to, you know, do our project, stuff like that. Now, the next session here uh, will be the interactive section, section, uh, session where everyone uh, will now be in, uh, invited to participate. Um, I, I think I needed to go through one or two uh, comments uh, from the from this particular uh, uh, session. Uh, I think that was uh, from. Um, let me see here uh, the comments here, and and I'm also encouraging the participants to look at the question and answer uh, section there, and also to have a look at um, you know. The comments, uh, maybe they, 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 they can contribute, they can respond or answer. There, I see Prof. Padi, Prof. Dem there, uh, saying a good presentation, and then uh, uh, from Prof. Padi, I see here, um, the learners need to, to acknowledge that they need to also create jobs for themselves based on the general employment uh, rate in the country. I, I think that is from uh, uh, Ras Gareth Prince. And then I can also see here from uh, Ms. Masemola that uh, we have the potential to work for and employ and empower ourselves. Traditional medicine is a multi-billion multi rent industry and that money must be used primarily to advance the plight of IK communities in order for our people to make this money, the traditional medicines must be ring-faced, developed, protected, promoted, and preserved. Uh, this we can only do through innovative policies and legislation, especially in uh, relation to countries uh, we can become continent and even world leaders if we start now. Um, so those are just few comments that I see here. So uh, let me open this uh, session. I think um, we can take about two or three uh, comments from, the, uh, from everyone here, from all, um, so that uh, if there is anything that uh, one needs to add, so one needs to, or even the, 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 the presenters or uh, panelists, uh, if they want to respond to one of the questions, to answer one of the questions then, because I, I saw one of the questions uh, were asked, uh, I can't see my questions now, uh, but I, I remember uh, Dr. Zulu, Mata Zulu tried to respond to uh, such question, and then the question was, uh, 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 you know, uh, face uh, me shango pango. Um, so Dr. Matabo Zulu Matabo tried to respond there. 
So let me take this opportunity to invite um, anyone who would like to respond to um, the problem up to this point. Anyone? Is there anyone who would like to respond, to answer questions, to respond to the comments and the comment block there? Okay. Then in the absence of none, let me uh, go to the next item now here. I will invite the poet, Me Ana Sabe. Uh, may I not the stage is yours. Thank you. A glimpse over the horizon. When the moon shone brightly in the sky and the stars danced gracefully over the horizon, wrapped up by the tranquility of the night, and the breeze whispered gently as it welcomed the heralding of dawn. I stared at the glittering stars, inspired by the glitz and glamour of creation, waiting for you to come home. I could not be on my own anymore. I could not endure the gloom and melancholy any longer. I could not bear the pain anymore of loneliness masquerading as my best friend. So I waited. I had hoped to see you again, to hear the sound of your laughter, to feel the touch of your love, and still the tender comfort of your hug. So, I waited. At the creeping of dawn, I looked at the empty horizon. As I watched the stars disappear one by one, as they got swallowed up by the horizon, Yet still no sound of you could be heard, except the melodious sounds of birds squeaking for the arrival of dawn, heralding the coming of a new day. Yet your presence still remained a dream. I counted the stars, endless as they were, so were the days. Days turned into months and months into years, Yet you still remained a stranger in my own world and a mystery to be fathomed. I looked at the stars hoping, somehow, some way, in any way, hoping that you would hear me. Yet you still remained a dream to come true and a fantasy to be reckoned with. So I waited, hoping you'd come back to me I struggled to come to terms with reality, with the truth that you are gone forever. So much to tell, so much to show. But I waited still, until I heard you were no more. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I knew that we are going to do that. That was wonderful. Very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next item now, item number 14, will be um, a session on subsidies where we are going to have ITS, arts, culture, heritage, museums, archives, and libraries. And then I'm going to request uh, Professor Sokobe uh, to take us through the session. Prof Sokobe, the time is yours. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, is Prof with us? Are you with us, Prof? Are you with us, Prof, under that particular uh, sub-team? 
IPS, arts, culture, heritage, museums, archives, and libraries. You with us for all? Okay. Okay. Hello, bro. Uh, Ramuka, I can't see him on the foyer, uh, on the yeah. platform. Uh, perhaps maybe he's struggling with the connection. Uh, can I then continue with the session? Madam um, Director, if I can just assist, uh, the professor is now in. Okay, okay all right. Okay, Prof. okay thank you. Prof, is that Prof? Prof, is that you? I am here. I can okay, only hear. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, the, the, the stage is yours now. Uh, we have that uh, sub thing under ITS, uh, arts, culture, heritage, museums, archives, libraries. And then uh, please, Prof, can you take us through the session? Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, colleague. And uh, let me start by thanking uh, Dr. Koisu and uh, the entire organizing committee for inviting me to the chair this session. I have intermittently attended uh, the sessions from yesterday, but uh, this morning especially have really benefited from listening in to the last few speakers, including Me Morongwa Masemola and Me Pango. Um, I'm especially happy to chair this session, which is the Heritage Museums and uh, Arts and Culture session, because that is my own uh, discipline. And I'll start by drawing attention of the um, team and presenters to the fact that uh, this year, 2021, has been declared the year of arts, culture and heritage by the AU Commission. I'm especially pleased that this is happening this year as this um, conference interrogates issues because many of us, when we think about arts, culture and heritage and think about uh, generating wealth from an African continental perspective, as has been said, we often, we often think about money and we think about money in terms of cash. What is, uh, I think, important to note with this declaration of 2021 as the year of arts, culture and heritage? is that it gives many uh, citizenry of the continent the opportunity to think, innovate beyond just simple entrepreneurial project to grant projects, which can really begin to benefit from financing. I'm also uh, going to highlight and draw attention to something which perhaps is one of the barriers we need to think about why we're not optimizing the wealth uh, uh, creation through arts, culture, and heritage. And that is the fact that um, as a continent, in 2006, we uh, saw it fit to develop the African Cultural Renaissance Charter. This charter is an extremely important instrument and can be found on the website of the AU Commission. Unfortunately, to date, only very few countries in the Southern region have signed it and ratified it. So it is not yet in force across the entire continent. If I can count, um, Unfortunately for the Sadek region, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight countries in the region have not yet uh, signed and ratified this, this uh, important protocol. As a result, many, I'd say, arts, culture, and uh, heritage practitioners, including IKS knowledge holders, cannot benefit from what would be the wealth that could be generated from this instrument. So I urge you, before we conclude the conference, and mobilize our countries, our governments to sign off and ratify this important convention so that as we speak today, entrepreneurs can begin to benefit from this wonderful instrument. It is my pleasure to welcome on this panel presenters, starting with Re Eshun from Northwest University. Messi Bukhodi, I, I see and, and acknowledge you um, from the ACSR archives, uh, Dr. M. Lubisi from Bumalanga and uh, with the revised program, uh, Mem Julie from the University of Limpopo. 
Um, we are more or less on time according to the revised program, but I'll request pre uh, presenters to also keep brief so that they can have a little bit of time for discussion. And I'm going to hand over now, first and foremost, to Re Eshun, who can start his presentation. I thank you. Is Re Eshun in the presenters? If not, uh, while we wait for him in the interest of time, I'm going to request Messe Bukhodi to present her own uh, presentation to the conference. Thank you very much. Okay, can I, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you very well. Okay, I'm not very sure if I can share my presentation, I'll try. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity to be part of uh, this wonderful initiative. Uh, my name is Simila Sibukudi, I am I am a, an archivist, a senior archivist with the Department of uh, Arts, Culture, Sports and Recreation. And I'm a, a, a graduate, I'm a master's graduate in IKS. So um, this is home actually. So um, uh, firstly, I would like to thank the program director, the panelists, the students who are here, and also the, the, the stakeholders who are proving to be full of surprises because we, speaking, uh, including myself, students were not aware that the opportunities are this vast. But um, thank you very much for the platform. Um, I will be speaking ma mainly on, on uh, IKS in the Arts, Culture, Heritage Museum and Archives and Libraries, because that's more or less where I am based. So my index, uh, index is as presented there. Let me start by saying that IKS is, uh, has been defined in many ways according to how it is uh, defined by uh, the reference materials that we find out there. But what I usually tell people is that IKS or indigenous knowledge is in every subject, is everywhere. It's in mining, it's in technology, it's in every subject. and uh, like all the speakers have been saying, we have a problem of uh, compartmentalizing IKS and making it all about just medicine or just traditional leadership or just a few uh, uh, topics that are highlighted every time uh, IKS is mentioned. But uh, we shouldn't be in the situation where we are saying that. Um, students are unemployed. Students are walking around in their graduation regalia because there are no jobs, especially in IKS, since IKS is multidisciplinary. But um, it is a situation right now, even where I work in the Department of Arts and Culture, we find that indigenous knowledge systems is, is foreign. It is something that is not, uh, no, it's not discussed, it's not known, it's not part of arts and culture, which is very, very uh, surprising because most of indigenous knowledge systems has to do with, in, uh, uh, arts and culture. Well, what we end up seeing is that uh, most students who studied indigenous knowledge systems, because they don't know what to do with the, the, the qualification, 
they end up looking for work in other disciplines. They go and study teaching and teach from scratch and not even teaching indigenous knowledge systems because it's not available in schools. They end up becoming part of the unemployed uh, masses out there. And it, it, it's very frustrating because there's a lot of work that needs to be done in uh, indigenous knowledge systems. We have a shortage of um, input from the indigenous knowledge system sector by everybody who has uh, studied indigenous knowledge. Um, the IKS policy gives us a broad spe a spectrum to be um, utilizing indigenous knowledge systems in recognizing the, the, the value of indigenous knowledge systems in promoting it, in developing it, in protecting it. The, the, the options are endless, but we still find that um, students or learners are saying they don't know, they don't have topics for, 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 for research, they don't have, uh, they don't know where to go to, 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 to utilize their qualification. So I don't know if the problem is with um, the way we hold these talks or the way we, uh, we discuss them, or I don't know what the problem really is, but what I'm, I know for sure is that even in these, um, in the recognition, the promotion, the development, in each one of these uh, points, there is work for indigenous knowledge uh, system students. So probably the, the issue here is the way we are addressing this issue of, of indigenous knowledge systems. I think we are more or less speaking about it in a very formal way. And I don't know, maybe we speak too much English, I don't know. But it seems as if whatever is being said in the platform of IKS is, is eluding those who, who have IKS in their hands. So uh, when we talk about the opportunities in the arts, for instance, everybody has been uh, using the arts for entertainment, but we need to catch up with, with, with the Western world. We have um, a situation where indigenous people uh, found that their, their knowledge was halted at some point when uh, colonization came through and all the oppressions and the apartheid and all that. When they came through, they, they halted the, the growth of indigenous knowledge in every way. Uh, everything that was being done at that moment was um, sort of completely shut off and it was not allowed to be explored or processed or developed or anything like that. So that tells us that since the beginning of colonization, we have to start there. We can't say right now that uh, now that we have democracy, we should now integrate indigenous knowledge systems with the Western, well, uh, Western knowledge system and go forward. It doesn't work like that. There is still that gap that is expecting us as uh, intellectuals to kind of uh, close it in a way that we should start where we left off and grow this indigenous knowledge to be more or less in the same level as the Western uh, knowledge system so that we can then say that we are ready to integrate it. Uh, right now we are complaining that uh, there are bills and policies and all these documents that are already saying that uh, traditional health 
or traditional medicine is supposed to be incorporated in, in Western medical facilities. But we have nothing. We don't have any textbooks. We don't have any uh, reference material. We don't have anything that we can say that the indigenous knowledge uh, system students have been working at a lab creating this particular material. We, we don't have anything written about our arts. We find that, uh, for instance, every time they speak about um, indigenous sports, they talk about the ghetto, morabaraba, and all those things. But there is nothing that is written in details about these, like the mathematics in, in, in the ghetto or in morabaraba. Uh, Professor Zulu, um, Tate Zulu Matabo has a book on, on indigenous mathematics. That is one book. And we still have many, many approaches that we can use from different cultures, considering we have so many languages in South Africa that we can approach mathematics from. We have then in Ndebele culture that has mathematics we probably have other like cosas or or swatis and they probably have their versions of mathematics what i'm trying to say is that just because one person wrote a, a book in mathematics in in indigenous mathematics it doesn't mean that uh, the subject of indigenous mathematics is saturated we still need to do more research so that we can actually say if this book doesn't make sense to you, try this one. It's talking about the same thing, but in a different perspective. So the arts need to be documented. They need to be developed. They need to be, we need to be at a point where we are saying, the ghetto have it, ha, we have a tournament of the ghetto and, and kids in, in, in villages are looking forward to every year being champions of, of this particular sport. And it's not just that sport, it's many, many sports. It's the same with, with culture. We have, we are literally looking at our culture disappearing in front of our eyes. Our traditional leadership is next to non-existent, especially here in the Northwest province. Uh, even those who are existing they are sitting on their, they are just sitting, not doing much because almost all their responsibilities are taken away. But I work a lot with traditional leaders and I find that there is a whole lot of work that should be done by us IKS students there in the villages with the courses, starting from the administration of uh, uh, Bukhosi, starting from, from, from uh, working with the Khosi to bring back that, that spirit of Lizima and, and utilizing um, the system of, of, of the initiation schools. In the Setswana culture, they had a system where whenever the, 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 the boys come from initiation school, they go to the Khosi and the Khosi gives them a name, the whole group gets a name and that group is given a responsibility of some sort in the community. And that I think was a way of, of, of teaching responsibility to the kids who are supposedly coming from learning how to be adults in a community. So, even now, initiation schools have lost their value because our cultures are just being ripped from us and we are not doing much about it. IKS students cannot be saying uh, they don't have work to do or they don't know what to do or what topics to use because there is plenty of opportunities in each and every uh, sector that I am talking about. Our heritage, we have cultural heritage that nobody cares to, to write about. Nobody cares to uh, 
protect or promote. We have museums that are empty. I actually went to Kaditweni, which is supposedly a national heritage site, but there is absolutely nothing that says anything about Botswana of the Northwest Province in their museum, except what they found at the, the ruins there in, in Kaditweni. Most Botswana people don't even know where Kaditweni is, yet we are saying that we are teaching indigenous knowledge systems. We are not, it's, it's almost as if indigenous knowledge systems is, is one thing in our heads and something else in the, in the offices there because it is definitely not a, a married to the communities or married to the students who are studying indigenous knowledge systems. So uh, that brings us to the, archives and the records that are being kept about um, our province, for instance. I work in the archives and the documentation or the records that we have here, they leave a lot to be desired. That's just uh, me not trying to get into trouble. But what I'm trying to say is, there is a whole lot more that still needs to be done. It probably just needs heads to be put together so that we can come up with ways of, of how to get these things done. We need, um, we have a, a, a challenge of uh, finding that the government departments in every sector, everybody has, has been saying that IKS is in every sector or every department of government, but all these departments don't recognize IKS. They don't know what indigenous knowledge systems is. And even the attitudes of the students who study indigenous knowledge systems, I guess it, it, it also uh, contributes to why uh, students are not able to know what to do with their qualifications because they have this uh, attitude of uh, indigenous knowledge system being backwards and, and it's not going with the times, it's not modern, it's all these things. But we now in this day and age, we find that other nations are coming into our cultures and learning our cultures and practicing our cultures while we turn our backs on our cultures. So maybe the indigenous knowledge system students need to do that self-introspection and actually find in their hearts the value of, of indigenous knowledge systems and actually push to, to, to have their programs supported because some of these people who are giving out money just need those petitions that 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 push in that right in the right direction so that we can actually uh, get the work done. For instance, uh, Dr. Chabalala and and uh, Dr. Chab were telling us that they are supporting uh, IKS initiatives, but somewhere in their talks they will tell you that. At the end of the day, we take about five or six students and, and or five knowledge holders and, and push them forward. That can easily say to a student that not everybody is going to get the help that is needed. But if we if a hundred students come to to that this Chaba and say, we need your support. And here are a hundred uh, ideas. I'm sure he will also be pushed to go forward to his management or whoever is, is in front of him and say, we need to put more support on this initiative. Unlike when we just say there is no support, there is nothing that we can do. And therefore, 
we need to be, let me rather go do teaching or nursing or whatnot. So the challenges are both in, uh, in us, the learners or the students, and also in, in, in our leadership. Uh, I wrote there that uh, we, I, I think in the 10 years since I graduated my undergrad, Indigenous knowledge systems has been discussed in closed doors, in offices and in, not within, not out there with the communities or with the students in a sense that uh, we, we take the practical side of Indigenous knowledge systems and we put it together with, with the theory. We, we, end up just um sorry Ms. Bohody. Ms. Bohody, if i can uh, request you to just summarize so that we can uh, give the other presenters a chance to present thank you very much okay okay uh to cut my probably uh venting short i'm very passionate about iks uh, my recognition my recommendations is uh, that over and above entrepreneurship, we need to uh, have the, 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 for instance, we have NRF, we have CSIR and all those offices, they are all in Pretoria. When I am a person from Daum wanting to work for NRF, I have to leave my community and not plow back, as we keep saying that the students have to plow back into their communities. Why isn't it that these uh, uh, IKS stakeholders are coming to where IKS is in, in, in rural communities and base their offices there so that we can actually utilize the students and not expect them to now move to the cities? The other recommendation is that we need to, to create research institutions in our local communities, not necessarily in Pretoria as we have now. I think every province should at least have a satellite uh, research or institution the same as we have in Pretoria that will be linked to the ones that are in the head office in Pretoria so that we can actually see where all this talk on IKS is going. Um, I urge students to look uh, into the documentation of every aspect of indigenous knowledge systems. We actually have uh, trees all over, just trees, all over the, 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 the Northwest province that have Setswana names, for instance. Just writing a whole book on the trees and what they do and, and whether they have medicinal properties or not or, and when you can utilize them and things like that. That is work on its own. Memorongwe has said a mouthful and I say, let's refer to what she said. And also one last thing is that these talks should be including uh, the management from your MEC's office, your, your different MEC's from different departments. They should be here listening to these talks so that they would be able to now influence the, 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 their departments in, in what is needed out there in incorporating IKS into their department. I can go on the whole day, but I don't have time. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr. Bohodi. Mm -hmm.